I bet you've got a calafaya with brown tips on the leaves in your home. This is probably the most common houseplant problem that leave people to pull out their hair, including me, but I've got seven fantastic tips to help you conquer this problem once and for all and stop your calafaya developing brown tips on the leaves. Not long ago, I believed that humidity problems was the main reason calafaeas develop brown tips on the leaves, but I've since realized that there are other factors causing issues for the plant that we can easily rectify. Don't get me wrong humidity is one of the leading causes and something I will come back to in a bit but perhaps the most important factor in the health of this plant is the water we use to irrigate it. Until recently I was watering all my plants with tap water and I was consistently seeing leaf problems on lots of my plants not just my calafaeas. The problem with tap water is that it generally contains things that house plants don't like such as trace amounts of lead, fluoride and chlorine. Calafaeas are generally thin leaf plants and are more sensitive to these contaminants than thick leaf plants such as ficus and philodendron. Now they won't necessarily melt when we pour tap water onto the soil but consistently watering with tap water gradually damages the leaf tissue cells of the calafaea and it shows up in brown tips on the leaves. Chlorine is added to tap water to kill microbes and make it safe to drink but unfortunately this can be toxic to some houseplants. If you let your tap water sit overnight in the hopes that chlorine will dissipate, then I wouldn't bother. Water companies now use chloramine, which is a compound containing chlorine to treat their water. Chloramine, unlike chlorine, does not evaporate when you let it sit overnight. Fluoride is added to tap water in some countries to help with tooth decay, which is a pretty sad situation in itself, but again, this is toxic to calafaeas. Trace amounts of lead shows up in tap water, as it travels through lead pipes and then out of our taps. It takes inconsistent watering with tap water and extra sensitive plants for this to become a long-term issue. Sadly for us, calafaeas are the most sensitive. So what's the solution I hear you cry? We all want our calafaeas to stay as gorgeous as they are in the shops when we buy them. Stop using tap water to irrigate your plants and use an alternative such as rainwater distilled water or filtered water. Rainwater is hands down the best water you can use for your calafaea simply because it's 100% natural. What can be better than what mother nature provides? The only problem though is collecting enough of it to water all of your plants, especially if you have a fair few like me. Luckily, I live in Sheffield, so there's ample opportunity to collect rainwater and I make sure to use this on my more sensitive plants like my calafaeas and my green orange plant. Filtered water systems are also great because they filter the nasties from tap water and make it pure for your plants to drink. These systems tend to be fairly small, so it's probably best to only use this for your more sensitive plants. And there is a cost we need to be mindful of when replacing the filters. Distilled water is another great option if you have easy and cheap access to it. A hack that I've been using recently is using the water collected from my dehumidifier. I use a dehumidifier in my bedroom upstairs to reduce the amount of humidity in the air when I'm hanging out clothes to dry. This means the unit collects about two liters of water every few days that I can then use to water my calafaeas and it contains none of the baddies that I've mentioned in the video. Once we master the type and quality of water we're using, we now need to understand the watering requirements for this fussy plant. Over the years, I have learned this plant does not like to dry out. My general advice for house plants is to let the soil dry out thoroughly between watering so that you avoid the risk of overwatering your plant and rotting the roots. This isn't the case with calafaeas, and they much prefer to have always some moisture in the soil. I use my moisture meter to check the level of moisture in the soil before I water, and I tend to water my calafaea when it reads two to four on the meter, whereas for my other plants, I'd wait until it reads one or two at the most. If I let the plant dry out more than this, it usually shows up by developing some brown tips on the leaves. This is because the cells at the tips of the leaves are the first to dry out become damaged. If you don't have a moisture meter then you need to rely on your finger and poke it in a couple of inches into the soil and water when it's starting to feel dry. If you are interested in getting a moisture meter like the one I have then do check out my Amazon page linked in the description of this video. It's a real game changer for plant care. Although calafaeas like moisture in the soil don't get confused with what I'm saying. Don't drown the plant so that it's always sitting in a bog. The roots of a calafaea tend to be quite tuberous, so if they're sitting in constantly soggy soil, they tend to go mushy and rot, and this will show in the leaves. As the leaves draw up too much moisture from the roots, the leaf cells burst and the tips go brown. This is unfortunately irreversible, 
and the damaged leaves will need to be cut out. It's a tricky balancing act to get the water in right for this plant, more so than with your other house plants. And it's one of the reasons I tend to advise only seasoned veterans buy this plant, unless you like a challenge of course. But I promise you, it's something you can become experienced in as you start to learn when your plant needs water and how much to give it based on your environment. The amount of water you give your calafea will largely depend on where you have it in your home. If you have it somewhere sunny, then you need to check the soil more often than if you have it somewhere cool and dark. In terms of where to keep your plant, my advice is to keep it away from direct sun at all costs. All the calafeas I've ever owned have absolutely hated being placed in a sunny position, even early morning sun. This is evident on my large calafea elga grass in my living room. I used to keep this plant near my west facing window and it got about three hours of direct sun each day and it started to develop brown tips on the leaves. A few months ago I moved it to the back of the room where direct light doesn't touch it and it's much happier with new leaves coming through that are free of issues. This approach mimics the natural environment they live in on the forest floor of tropical rainforest where they only get dappled sunlight throughout the day. Now I always say it's best to mimic the natural environment as much as possible in our homes when caring for our plants and this is especially important for calafeas. I also keep my elga grass under my sansi grow bulb which I keep on for about 10 hours a day and the plant has responded really well to this. Grow lights really allow you to control the amount and intensity of light your calafeas receives and you can easily respond to the signals that the plant gives you that it's not happy. If the leaves are turning a pale yellow colour then the intensity is probably too much and you can either reduce the hours the light is on or move it further away from the plant. If you are on the market for a grow light then check out my link to Sansi in the description of this video and use Sheffield 15 at checkout for a 15% discount on all their products. You've probably heard that humidity is the most important aspect when it comes to calafea care, but this is often misunderstood. The assumption is that calafeas need high humidity to thrive, but this is inaccurate. The thing they crave above everything else is consistent humidity. This is why they tend to look absolutely perfect in the nursery and how they thrive in the wild. The level of humidity in the jungle is consistent day to day, and this is usually matched in the local garden centre. The problem we encounter at home is that we assume they need high humidity so we place a humidifier next to them for a few hours a day and then turn it off for the rest of the day. This brings the level of humidity up for part of the day and then low for the rest and it's this change that leads to brown tips on the leaves. You're much better off picking a spot for your plant in your home that is away from cold drafts from doors and windows, is not near a radiator leaving it there to become accustomed to the environment. It will need to adjust to its new environment, but be patient and the plant should reward you with blemish-free leaves. Let me know in the comments if you still have problems with your calafea, even though you've got a humidifier next to it. Calafeas are extremely temperamental and it takes a lot to have a perfect plant, so don't be too discouraged when you find a couple of brown leaves on the plant. Even the most experienced growers face issues with this plant, it's just the way it is. When the leaf starts to turn brown, then don't be afraid to cut it out. This will stress the plant out in a good way that sends a signal to the plant to push out new growth. So what can you do if you have a calafea that is looking worse for wear? This is the perfect opportunity to reset your plant. Take it out of its pot, cut away damaged leaves and repot into some fresh potting soil. If the plant is large, then you can divide it into smaller plants. Like I said earlier, this plant grows from large tubers in the soil, so all we need to do is break these apart at their natural clumps and pot them up separately. New leaves will grow within a few weeks, and you'll need to follow the tips in this video to make sure the leaves stay perfect. Check out this video here, where I show you the best way to repot an overgrown calafea elga grass into a brand new pot.